Good day, good day everyone. Once again, your favorite uncle is back and obviously coming to be a plug when it comes to maths and science. Uh, in this case, we're still looking at the IEB exam. So if you haven't subscribed, please uh, just uh, make sure that you're part of the family. And of course, uh, you can always get in touch with us. Uh, our email address is uh, uh, available on the description of this video. Um, now, so I want us to quickly look at this question based on circuits, right? Um, obviously, as per your suggestions, I keep, uh, you know, taking random questions from any question paper, by the way, uh, but on the IEP exam for now, just to help you to prepare towards your exams. Right, let's get right into this question. So they say to us, uh, in the circuit represented below, the battery has an EMF of 12 volts, and an internal resistance of uh, 0.5 ohms, right? So the battery is connected to, uh, as shown rather, it uh, uh, to a light bulb and resistor Rx, both of uh, unknown resistance. M meters have zero resistance and volt meters have infinite resistance. All right, now they tell us that switch S1 and S2 are, are initially both open. Now remember, so when both of the uh, switches are open, in this case, particularly switch uh, S1, there is no current that's flowing into the external circuit, right? So as a result, what you'll end up with is that uh, you just have, in this case, um, in fact, it's as good as, uh, you know, uh, nothing is happening in the external circuit. Uh, so... Just remember that, that uh, obviously if our switch S1 is open, so when I look at the circuit, it means that there's no current. And please don't say current will flow and stop, you know, at switch S1 and go back. There's no such a thing, right? It just simply means that current will not flow, right? Uh, just a, a quick reminder of that. Right, so they say define EMF. Remember that EMF is the total energy per unit charge, so it comes from this equation, uh, V is equals to W over Q, right? So the total energy or the total amount of work done per unit charge, all right, uh, within the terminals of the battery, right? So um, they say, what will be the reading on the voltmeter V when both switches are open? Well, uh, in that case, it goes without saying, the reading on V will actually be zero volts, OK, uh, and the reason for that is that there is no potential difference between, uh, you know, um, remember the voltmeter V is essentially reading the voltage across uh, that um, uh, bulb there. OK, and as a result, uh, because there's no current flowing, there'll be no difference in the potential uh, of that bulb. OK, right. So um, they say switch S1 is now closed while switch S2 remains open. So that's very important. So we're going to close switch S1 and S2 remains open. All right, so when S2 is open, so what will happen in this case? It means that there is no current that is flowing uh, within this resistor. So it's as good as that resistor doesn't exist. Okay, please keep that in mind because there's no current flowing there, right? So um, they say to us, um, so switch S1 is now closed while S2 is open. The emitter A1 reads 1.6 amperes. So now we know the current that's passing through here. Uh, they said it's 1.6 amperes. Okay, my A just looks ugly. So that's 1.6 amperes. So now if you think about it, so what happens? So it means that current will flow. We know the total current flows across that internal resistor there. Okay. And obviously the current will flow. So it means because there's no current flowing through that resistor there, right? There's, uh, we don't have a parallel combination in this case. So it means that the total current will pass through A2. It will pass through that resistor there, uh, that bulb rather. Uh, and then... Uh, the total current will also pass through uh, A1. So it means that both A1 and, uh, and, and A2 uh, will actually read the same value. I hope that makes sense to you, ladies and gents. Right, so uh, 
yeah i'm actually trying to erase here all right uh, this guy is just giving me just a bit of an issue okay so um so in this case all i'm just trying to say is that your resistance or rather both um uh, emitters will actually read the same value for current right now they say to us determine the resistance of the bulb okay so we know the current that's passing through there okay and the bulb is the only one that is experiencing uh, in this case or oh, that is our external resistor so what i'm going to do there is i'm going to actually uh, so that's 7.2.3 so i'm going to use my emf equation why because i do have the emf as well as um, the internal resistance so i'm going to say emf is equals to i r plus small r or internal resistance but remember for our emf value we've got 12 okay right which current do we use here of course it's going to be the total current which is actually given as 1.6 right so in this case that's the external resistance but remember there's only one resistor in this particular case so um, the internal resistance is given as 0 0.5 okay so obviously we're going to uh, have a mathematical gymnastics okay so i am simply going to say that's 12 divided by 1.6 okay that gives us 7.5 okay uh, so r plus 0 0.5 will give us 7.5 and to get the value of r i'm just going to subtract that 0 0.5 and I'm, I'm i'm sure you can see how that will give us 7 ohms right so that's the value of our resistance right the resistance of the bulb it's the only resistor in the circuit so in this case that will be the resistance okay right now they say to us calculate the reading on the voltmeter v right so now we're looking for voltmeter v which is the reading across our bulb we know the current that passes there all right as well as the resistance now so i can use ohm's law okay and say v is equal to i multiplied by r but i know the current that passes through that resistor is 1.6 and in this case the resistance is seven we've just calculated it there okay so i'm going to say right for it that's 1.6 multiplied by seven and that will give us 11.2 volts okay now remember because it's the only one that's uh, in the external circuit it means that your v external is actually 11.2 uh, meaning that your um, you know your external voltage uh, rather your your internal uh, uh, voltage in this case the voltage across the internal resistor will be the difference between the external voltage as well as the emf value all right uh, but that's uh, besides the point let's go to the next question right now they say to us calculate the rate of energy dissipation in the battery now what is the rate of energy dis dissipation? Uh, the power is the rate at which work is done, right? Uh, work is energy, right? So essentially what they are saying is calculate the power in this case. So remember that power is the rate that's work done divided by uh, the change in time, okay? Uh, but uh, you also remember that when we calculate power we can actually use any of the three equation uh, formulas a uh, formula rather uh, i squared r so that's i squared r we can use v squared over r sorry over r right um or we can even use v times i right so i just wanted to show you that power remember that's the rate at which work is done. Now, in this case, uh, we want the rate of the energy dissipated, uh, uh, rather, the rate of energy dissipation in the battery, right? Now, where is energy dissipated in the battery? Remember, dissipation is the use of energy. All right, so that's across your internal resistance, isn't it? Right? The battery supplies you with energy. 
um, but in this case, the, the, the internal resistor dissipates, uses up that energy. So what I'm going to do is I know in this case, we have the current that is passing through the internal resistance, but we also have the value of the internal resistance. So that's going to be 1.6 squared multiplied by the internal resistance. We said that's 0 0.5, okay? Um, so that would be uh, 0 0.5 uh, multiplied by 1.6 squared. And so that gives us 1.28. So that's 1.28 watts. That's how much power in this case is uh, dissipated by the internal resistance. Okay, right. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Now they say to us, uh, switch S is now closed so that both switches are closed, right? Now, uh, before we even continue with that, let's go back to the circuit, right? So the moment that we close the switch, I just want to actually illustrate this with a different color, right? So the moment we close the switch, remember, so what it simply means is that now we have a parallel combination. So some of the current will pass through that, um, you know, emitter and resistor there, but some of the current will actually pass through that other resistor, which is Rx. Now, remember, ladies and gents, the moment that you connect resistors in parallel, right, what happens to the external, the total external resistance? That would decrease, isn't it? Okay, so your resistance decreases, and obviously that would increase the current in your circuit, right? So they said we, we've closed the other switch, right? So they say when switch S2 is closed, state whether the following will decrease, increase, or stay the same. Right, so the first one, they say the reading on emitter A1. Now, when we go to A1, remember that is the total current. As I said to you, right, the moment that you connect a resistor in parallel, that will decrease the effective resistance of your circuit, or in this case, the external resistance of your circuit, and we do know that I is V over R, isn't it? Okay, so once we decrease the external resistance, in this case, my current value should actually increase. So to answer that question, right, so 7.2.6A, okay, obviously our value there, or rather our answer there, will be that uh, the current will increase. Okay, right. Oh, they did say explain. Uh, in this case, uh, we will say a decrease um, in a decrease in resistance. Okay, or rather, let's say uh, let's be specific and say the external resistance. External resistance. All right, will increase. Uh, the current will increase. The current, okay, right. So in this case, uh, please note you can even use um, Ohm's law, I is V over R, and indicate there that when you decrease current in this case by adding the other resistor, then what happens? The current when you de decrease resistance rather uh, by adding the other resistance the current increases right b they say the rate of energy dissipation in the battery now very important remember we said what is that that would be the power that is uh, obviously uh, in the internal resistance now if you think about it p is equals to i squared multiplied by r right what is that? What did we say just happened to current? Current has increased, right? So because our internal resistance stays the same, remains constant, so it means that our power will actually decrease. Okay, so uh, uh, did I say decrease? No, it will increase, right? So in this case, uh, the rate at which uh, energy, uh, so we know uh, our answer there should be increase. 
And please always remember to answer that first before you explain, right? And we will say in this case, an increase in current, in current, okay, uh, will increase, or we can if, even explain that uh, um, uh, power is directly proportional to the square of the current, right? Um, so uh, an increase in uh, current, yeah, you see now, uh, I'm actually writing the same thing twice, right? Okay, so when we increase the current, in fact, you know what, let me not even bother writing that down. Of course, you do understand that, uh, as I did explain there, that uh, because uh, resistance stays the same, right? So internal resistance remains constant. So an increase in current will increase the power uh, of uh, the power dissipated. Okay, right. Finally, they say the reading on voltmeter V, right? Um, so voltmeter V, uh, I want you to note because we've got a, we've got um, in this case a parallel situation. So we know the voltage across resistor R, right, will be the same voltage across the bulb, but it will be the same voltage as the external resistance, right? Um, so what does that mean? It simply means that they want us to find the voltage across the external resistance. And please, I want you to listen carefully uh, on this one. Uh, so what will happen? So remember that external voltage will always, always uh, follow what and uh, happens to external resistance. So remember I said by adding a resistor in parallel, right? Um, the external voltage, uh, rather the external resistance will uh, decrease. So it means that V external will also decrease. Now let's get to the explanation part of this. Okay, right. So what will happen in this case? So remember that you decreased the external resistance right? So what happens? We had current increasing. Uh, that's what we, were, we kept saying in the uh, other uh, questions, right? So current, our value for current has increased, right? But in this case, I want you to note, so it means that our internal voltage, which is I times R, right, also increased. An increase in current will increase the internal voltage which obviously, um, because uh, R remains constant, right? But we know that EMF is equal to V external plus V internal, right? So I want you to note what has happened. V internal has increased, but remember EMF stays constant, okay? So what does that do? It will decrease the amount of V external. Right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. We said, well, uh, our current increased because we've decreased the effective resistance. V internal increases because the current also increased and, um, you know, internal resistance remains constant. All right, and then we came to this. We know that uh, V internal plus V external will give us the EMF, but EMF remains constant okay, uh, remains constant. So as a result, we know that V external will also, will decrease, okay? Right, which come, brings us back to that. Right, ladies and gents, I hope that you were able to follow on in this question and uh, very interesting one here, all right? Um, so uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, also just hit the like button at the end of the lesson if you like our lessons. And by the way, I'll still be looking for more of your suggestions. I think uh, after this, I'll switch over to just looking at chemistry, uh, particularly acids and base, as well as chemical equilibrium, uh, since you guys uh, said that we should look at those. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.